And she is back! My gosh! She is definitely back! Ginalaw na na niya talaga ang baso after 5 years of hiatus. Maria Tiza Manalo is back in the pageant scene this time as her beloved province, Quezon's appointed representative to the forthcoming Miss Universe Philippines pageant! Grabe, I am making this vlog just to share you how much kilig I was seeing her again yesterday na talagang ibang level talaga yung kilig na nararamdaman ko when I finally saw her again after five years. You can really hear it from our collective shriek the moment she came in. Salt and Ice, a cocktail bar that she co-owns with her business partners in BGC. The moment she entered the establishment and immediately flashed her radiant smile to us, Boom! We were all transported back to the Atisa Manalo we fell in love with five years ago. No super warm, personable, and has a genuine smile for everyone. So as she was formally sashed by Mrs. Emma Suayan as her beloved province's official candidate for Miss Universe Philippines this year, I can't help but notice the subtle physical changes that she is sporting right now. Tan skin, dyed hair, among many other things. Yes, the sweet baby face is still there, but you can actually see her moves have become more refined so, um, as she has blossomed to become a full-grown seasoned woman. Maybe it really helped that she deliberately stayed away from the limelight in her five-year hiatus, so the excitement in the air was very, very palpable. And as she began to reintroduce herself and answer questions from the press in the process, I realized how she has really endeared herself to us in those five years that she was away from the limelight. And I can attribute that to her genuine smile. That genuine smile is so magical and it really ebbs on one greeting or seeing her. Now it's very infectious and completely disarms you immediately. And mind you, ah, for me, that's a huge thing because she made me feel that she's still relatable and has not changed even though she is already leading a very successful business career. So doon pa lang, kuhuan niya, niya talaga yung loob ko. So it was just easy for me to warm up to her again as she was answering her questions. And as she answered her questions, napansin niyo ko, you can really observe that her communication skills have already improved. Now she looks more confident and self-assured this time around in answering her questions compared to her previous competition and that alone is already a huge improvement when i was given a chance to ask a question i really took this opportunity to ask her about the things that she has involved herself with that five-year hiatus to establish atisa's new identity as an empowering businesswoman in her community grabe guys in those five years, she has successfully created her own line of restaurants and even brought the franchise of Kumi Yogurt Drink to our country. So I'm really, really impressed. Na alam niya yun, si Atisa talaga yung is the perfect case of what I have been telling girls to live a full life first before joining a pageant or coming back to pageantry because these life experiences will really make one more mature and more aware of herself in terms of her goals and aspirations. And in Atisa's case, nakita nyo, she really chose this path of becoming her own boss and building a food business or a food business empire which not only satisfy her satisfy herself as a foodie lover but enriching the lives of a lot of people throughout the jobs that she is giving them. Diba? Grabe! Ibang atisa na to. And consequently, her improvement on her communication skills will definitely follow. There's wisdom now. There's wisdom and conviction with the words that she is saying now. And you can really feel it. Kasi, how old was she when she joined Bini Bini? last time i think she was only 20 years old and i remember her telling me that during the i remember her telling that to me during the final screening of binibining pilipinas na I, I remember i still posted it on my instagram na she was only 20 years old she was a 20 year old student taking up accountancy and of course that time she was still a freshie from the province so her communication skills was not that strong yet but now nakita niyo during the press con the difference in her communication skills is very remarkable and that's a great backstory that she has. From a simple provinciana in Quezon to now an empowered woman generating jobs for her community and thereby contributing something for our country's economy. Wow, that's really, really inspiring. That's transformational leadership right there. Because kung labasan at patimbangan ng tangible results from her advocacy ang magiging labanan, well, she has something to show and it's not padded. 
Diba? So this is why I would love for her to keep highlighting that in her numerous Q&As or posts online and give her own perspective about it. I know it's her passion serving our countrymen through the businesses that she has been building and I would like her to share more about it on her social media accounts, how she has converted her love for food to something creative or impactful, the challenges rin that, that she encountered along the way. And I would love for her to post more what she likes, whether it's food or drinks or social engagements with other people so we can get to know her more. Pa, because I think that air of mystery that she is generating right now won't work in Miss, Uni in Miss Universe because, let's face it, it's all about relatability in Miss Universe at the end of the day. Because at this point, guys, she can already connect with us with her beauty and humble beginnings. So imagine if she can, inspi if she can inspire more with her community, with her passion and success despite the challenges in life, that this girl has really made out of something and cultivated herself to become the best, to become the best version of herself at just the age of 26. And apart from her backstory, I think she also has other strengths that I am seeing right now. The support, for one, the support that she is getting from her fandom plus her province's demographic that it could really propel her candidacy than any other girls in the competition. Kasi diba, nakita nyo naman, Quezon province is so huge and it is so, it's so strong that it will be so stupid for all the local artisans and talents and the people there not to support her 100% na. I mean, nothing. Atisa can cherry pick anyone whom she wants to be part of her team for her MUP bid this year. Like the level of popularity of Eliza Malinao, Michelle Gumabao, Michelle D, for the respective candidacies before. That if she will ask support from us, we won't hesitate to give it to her outright. And this level of support can definitely propel or elevate her candidacy in terms of getting sponsorships and online voting during the contest. Diba? Next strength that I'm seeing from her is her level of competitiveness. Now, she already has the international experience, but it is not this that, I, that astounds me the most when we talk about Atisa's level of competitiveness in pageantry. Remember during Binibining Pilipinas, if Catriona wasn't competing that year, Atisa would have definitely won Binibining Pilipinas Universe that time. Because remember, she was so memorable in that pink evening gown and was very consistent throughout her entire performance that she eventually beat the other more popular delegates like Aya Abesamis, Karen Galman, Vicky Rushton, among many others. So when, so when she finally got sent to her international competition, Miss International, she proved that she wasn't a one-trick pony because had the eventual winner not been celebrating her birthday then, it could have been her. So, kaampante talaga ako kay Atisa in this aspect of her candidacy. I know she won't let us down as early as now. Now, let's talk about her weaknesses naman. So far, what I could think of first is her demeanor and her doll-like aura. Inaaminin naman natin, not necessarily what you describe what a Miss Universe is. Because when you say Miss Universe, the first thing that comes to our mind is sexy, palaban, rampadora, and it's not a Tisa we think of right away, diba? But something that Catriona at the same time was able to do, crossing over from Miss World to Binibining Pilipinas. Right now, seeing her demeanor, nasisuitan pa rin ako sa demeanor niya. And it's purely beyond makeup and styling wonders anymore. So what I can suggest is for her team to bring out her transformation to the woman that Miss Universe is looking for. And is it, it is about showing the woman that she is today, which is having more experiences as a woman. And it should translate to how she speaks, talks, and moves. Like, instead of saying it in a very sweet and nice way, she should be more direct and authoritative with her speeches and Q&A &A instead. And the same goes for her styling for Miss Universe Philippines. I feel she needs to be more womanly in her aura. Because take for example the white outfit that she wore during her sashing ceremony. It was white and feathers. Na, very angelic. Not womanly. You, you, guys, you guys get what I mean. Womanly wherein it could have the same effect but it's sexier but not vulgar. 
but at the same time, more structured and form-fitting. Example of this is Michelle D. wearing that unforgettable Salabat outfit in El Salvador. Remember, Michelle still retained that classiness, her classiness and expensiveness while giving that Miss Universe aura in that outfit. So you get it? Because the last thing that we would want for Atisa during Miss Universe Philippines competition time very, very soon is to be dwarfed by her fellow candidates in terms of aura. O sige, apply natin to sa white feather outfit niya nung sashing ceremony. What if she wore something like this? Look, it's a simple white satin haltered neck gown, but with the same effect that I am talking about. Now, it's very sensual, womanly, and not revealing too much at the same time. Diba? But guys, looking ahead, if ever she wins Miss Universe Philippines, no doubt she will be her own woman. She will also have her own spin and narrative about her candidacy and will definitely be taken care of by MUP organization. Moreover, I see her doing well in Mexico. Yung mga beauty na ganyan ni Atisa could really definitely slug it out or go head-to-head -head with the likes of Antonia Porcield or even Miss Colombia last year na nalaban na laban pagdating sa mukha pa lang and ibang-iba talaga yung mukha niya sa mga mukha na pinadala natin sa Miss Universe in recent years. Mala Indian beauty si Rabia, pure Filipina beauty naman si Bea. Sultry si Celeste, de ba? Na bordering Latina na and Oriental beauty si Michelle with and nakakatuwa. And with her relation features ni Atisa ngayon, she could really, really do well. So overall, I am excited how Atisa will showcase her different side for this pageant this year. We waited for her for so long and now she is ready, more than ready to buckle down to work. Now she's finally giving in to the clamor and alam mo yun, ibang level talaga yung magic ng isang katulad niya na waiting for the right time to join, who came out obscure at the start but emerged on top till the end, competed and almost won her first international pageant, Lilo, and nagpahinga, nagpahinog, and now, ready to take on the challenge of winning our country's fifth Miss Universe crown. There goes my insights about Atisa as early as now. Do you agree with everything that I just said here? If not, let me know all your dissent so I can see where you are all coming from at the same time. Looking ahead, guys, I really hope I will be given a chance to get to meet the other Miss Universe Philippines candidates in person so I can also make similar content about them. So marami pong salamat uli. Until my next video, bye!